Hey, welcome back. This is Taiwan Part Two of our Asia series. Today we're going to be trying out Taiwan Ramen. On Episode One of the Taiwan Double Bill, we tried out Taiwan Ramen Senbei or Rice Cracker. Today we're going to try out the cup noodle version. Will it be as spicy as the senbei? After the ramen, we're going to be trying out Lu Rohan, which is the braised pork on rice. Going to serve it with a soft boiled egg. Cool. For dessert, we're going to try out Kavalan. When you say this name, you must say it like that. Kavalan. Kavalan. Just based by the name, you wouldn't think it's from Taiwan. You really wouldn't. The only the only way I knew this was ta from Taiwan is in Japan in supermarkets under the next to the alcohol name they have the flag. Right. Yeah. I've never seen a single malt whiskey from Taiwan before. Now, this company actually does produce many whiskies, special blends, single malts. Mm -hmm. I think they have blended whiskies too. Yeah, they do. Recently, they started selling like canned gin tonic. Yeah. It was not cool. Not cool. Oh, you mentioned of, uh, it tasting like dish soap. Dish soap. That's not cool. Okay, so the first dish is served. This is Taiwan ramen. Kind of curious whether it'll have a similar flavor to the rice cracker we tried. That was like very green, oniony, and spicy. I remember I was kind of uh, choking a little. It was kind of intense, like right around here. As we mentioned in the last episode, Taiwan ramen is actually a Japanese invention. It's from Nagoya. It originates in a restaurant called Misen. The owner of this ramen shop is Taiwanese. Basically, he kept like changing the recipe and making it spicier to kind of adjust it to Nagoya, like local people's flavor. This is actually the cup ramen version from the shop in Nagoya, Misen. Nice. The first Taiwan ramen in Japan. Now, is their shop only in Nagoya or did they branch out to other cities? I actually don't know. Itadakimasu. Itadakimasu. Ooh, yeah, this is very much similar to the <laughs> to the rice cracker. It's like a bullseye. It doesn't waste any time. No. I quite like the noodle texture. Mm -hmm. And the meat has quite a nice flavor as well. It's very seasoned. I think the green onion is a nice addition. Whatever the base is, it's very much masked by the mm. spice. It has that kind of like very fragrant, like homemade chili oil kind of taste. I can't tell you, it's not a fish base. It's very like pity pity, as we say in Japan. Like it really tingles on your lips. At first, it wasn't really affecting my mouth, but it is now. It is now. It's grown a bit. Yeah. It's like a warm fire blanket. It's like a mouthful of lava cotton. A fire blanket to put out the fire, or a, an actual wall of fire? Like a, a blanket engulfed in flames. For the little dehydrated meats, it really complements the soup. I think the spice level, as a personal preference for me, I think... It's about right. It's about right. If it were any spicier than this, it would, I think, subtract from my enjoyment of it. It says the karasa level, or the spice chili level, is a level 4. Out of 10? Out of 5. Out of 5? Yeah. Okay. Kanpai scores? 8. Yeah, I was thinking 7. I've had similarly delicious, like, spicy instant ramen. I don't know if this does enough to really separate itself from others I've tried. So the reason I give it 8 is I'm getting a slight Taiwanese background taste. Star anise or cinnamon. It's very subtle. <laughs> really? <laughs> it is subtle, but it is okay. there. Interesting. I'm not picking up on that. I'm not at all familiar with Taiwanese food, so <laughs> that could be why. 
the next dish is going to be a lot more misidonal than this one. So okay. So the next dish is Lu Rohan. So this is braised pork on rice. Probably the national dish of Taiwan. Is it really? Oh. I think so. Yeah. This or beef noodle. It's very striking visually. It's usually not as black as this. <laughs> <laughs> What happened? <laughs> well, I used a spice mix and I cooked it a long time. It kind of mm -hmm. caramelized. So this dish, it's kind of like they argue where it originated, China or Taiwan. It's made by cooking shallots in oil and then cooking the pork in the oil and returning the fried shallots back to the pan and then adding spices like cinnamon, star anise and it just braises slowly mm. all day. So a pretty involved process. And it's usually served with a soft boiled egg, sometimes some green vegetables on the side. It smells very, very good. It's not as uh, it's not as sweet as I imagined. Is this similar to what you've had in the past? Usually the pork is a bit more tender than my version. The flavor is very similar. Okay. Almost has like a Chinese five spice taste. Cinnamon, star anise, cumin, like mixed together. Mm -hmm. It's very complex. Ooh, that goes really well with egg. When I had it in Taiwan, I think it cost me three US dollars. Like a bowl like this was. I'd imagine it's like Taiwan soul food. Outside of Taiwan, would you think it's a challenge to find this uh, restaurant? It's available in Japan at a few restaurants because Taiwanese food is becoming slightly more popular. It's like a trend recently, mm -hmm. which I think was started by Bubble, bubble tea, tapioca tea, mm. becoming like a craze. If you visited Taiwan, this would be one of the dishes you would most want to eat, I think. I believe some people in Taiwan eat this for breakfast. I, I think it could pass as a breakfast food. It's, sorry to bastardize the uh, culture, but imagine this like in a taco. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be bomb. I'm sure somewhere in California, some Taiwanese guys putting this in a taco. I told you in Florida, there's a restaurant called Sushi Burrito, right? I'd never been there, but I always wondered what it was. And it's basically a maki sushi. <laughs> Everyone knows sushi, but they don't know maki sushi, so... And they just call it sushi burrito. <laughs> <laughs> When I went back to England, I saw a restaurant called Taco Look At Me Now. Familiar with that song? The Phil Collins song? Take a look at me now. The restaurant name is God damn it. Taco Look At Me Now. God damn it. <laughs> I'd give it like a high eight. Awesome. Fantastic. Really good. And very filling. It is filling, yes. Yeah. It looks a little bowl, but it packs a punch. Yeah. <laughs> really, Ooh. if you do have it, definitely get it with the soft boiled egg. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think the restaurant I went to was like, if you just order it, it won't come with the egg. But they had a lot of like pictures on the menu called mustard greens or some other vegetables on the side. So. I think without the soft boiled egg, I would have given it like a seven. It adds like a, a touch of soft and creaminess, softness yeah. and creaminess. Which you need because it's quite rich. Yeah. I think you need mm -hmm. that creaminess to balance it out. So Alex, ready for dessert? Dessert. So here we have our Kavalan single malt whiskey. Kavalan. Kavalan. Nice. 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 <laughs> Smooth. The mists of Kavalan. I'll read this, see if you can get into the mood. In ancient times, the land of Yelan was called Kavalan, a pristine terrain protected by the soaring snow mountain range and fertile Layang plain. Remote and subtropical, this piece of land is situated in the northeast corner of Taiwan, where bountiful rainfall and water filtered through Yelan's rich volcanic soil, collide to provide Kavalans. Cool. Cool. You know, if you didn't say Taiwan, I would think this is like the premise for like a like RPG game. <laughs> <laughs> the history and terrier of this land have combined to create for you this exquisite whiskey. We have three notes, no aftertaste, but we have a note on the color, Midnight Amber. Mmm. Midnight amber. Midnight. Cool. Just a quick note on the bottle. One, on the cap here, there's like a like old school like jalopy 
Corona, did you see that? <laughs> that's, that's pretty badass. <laughs> very classy. And also, it's like the model design, like the shape. Mm, it's quite classy. It's too. very like Art Deco. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like 60s building or something. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking more like 1930s, like mm. a skyscraper. And imagine like <laughs> some uh, good old, like, what are they called? Flappers? Flappers are like the like 1920s party people from America. Mm. Like, or in twenties, yeah. Yeah, they're like, like they wore like the really tight caps. They look like swimming caps. So on the nose, delicate and silky, full with the scent of ripe and tropical fruits, fragrant floral notes, and warm vanilla. Ooh, tropical, fruity, and vanilla. I'm more of a fan of like a uh, woody and nutty than fruity for a single malt. It smells like. A typical Japanese blended whiskey to me. Then again, it is on the rocks, so that often alters the nose. Do you get tropical fruits? Yeah, kind of. I get like a banana. Yeah, banana. Mango? I was thinking mango too. Palette. Elegant, perfectly balanced and easy to drink. Rich and complex layers of butterscotch, creamy toffee and vanilla create a soft and thick multi-layered taste that's lingeringly long in the finish. That sounds really good. Very, very, very interesting. Interesting. First off, it's very smooth. There's no burn to it. I do get like buttery, something buttery about it. Yeah. Caramelly. It's buttery, but it doesn't <laughs> taste like butter. Butter, no. I'm getting like a slightly uh, like metallic Metallic notes, like a, like mineral water. They mentioned the water is very important to yeah. this whiskey. Okay. And the Piaru. It's from Taiwan, right? It wouldn't be Piaru, it would be PR. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean no, correctly spoken again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'd say to a Taiwanese person, Piaru, and they'd, they'd be like, Are you okay? It's very interesting taste in whiskey. It is. I've never had anything like it. The strongest point to me is like the metallic, like mineral yeah. notes. Wow. And the aftertaste, the finish, super clean. It's like the mineral notes that linger. So it, it kind of tastes like you just like took a swig of mineral water. That's been near a volcano. That would totally explain it. It really tastes like a, a whiskey that cannot be made just anywhere. So this is not a cheap whiskey. This uh, 50 <laughs> milliliter bottle was 1100 yen with tax. So 11 US dollars for basically four shots of whiskey. I was a little skeptical when I first saw this on the shelves. I thought, hmm, a single malt from Taiwan. Hmm. Are they just jumping on the like bandwagon? Bandwagon? Are they, are they just trying to get in on, on the craze of uh, other like the successes of other single malts. Yeah. Same it's yeah. totally different. <clears throat> I can see this doing well in Japan. The question is, would this do well in America or the UK? It'd be quite hard for them to market it. Because we have so many quality whiskies in the UK. To like break through that market. But the fact that it's from Taiwan already makes it very unique. What volcanic water aspect of it is very interesting. But many people might be hesitant or skeptical as I was, mm. like a whiskey from Taiwan, <laughs> you know? They'd have to really, really push their push it. Yeah. appeal. Yeah. Would you like to give it a campfire score? Yeah. For me, it's easy. I'll give it a nine. For me, the biggest deciding factor on my nine score is the uniqueness. Mm. I've never tasted whiskey, yeah. anything like this before. Yeah. And it doesn't taste gimmicky, like like a Jack Daniels like fireball whiskey. It's not gimmicky like that. It mm. tastes very, very high quality, very pure. Let's say a nine. Heck yeah. Join the nine club, Mr. <laughs> Kavalan. Cool. Dang. That wraps up the uh, Taiwan segment of our Asia series. Only two videos left. What's next, David? Next stop, Vietnam. We're going to Nam. It's a Namu. We're going to Saigon. We're going to Nam. 
If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Also the bell notification icon to keep up to date with our newest releases. If you have any questions or comments about today's video, please let us know down below. Until next time. See ya. See ya. Going to Nam.